Okay, so here's the welder settings on my uh, Millermatic 211 to do the floor pan. I've got it set right in the middle of the 18 gauge. Uh, the Miller 211 tends to weld a little bit hotter, um, so I don't want to blow through. And I'm going to do what's, ca what I, what's called stitch welding, and basically you just on and off the trigger um, and you just create a, a continuous weld that way. If you were to hold the trigger and try to weld it in one shot, you'd probably blow holes through the oil, the uh, floor pan. So that's the welder setup. Okay, so here's the pan. That's actually the drive shaft hump and uh, the rear axle bumpers right here and the rear axle would go back there. But again, you know, all that's torn apart. Now, what I did was I took a piece of a uh, roof section uh, from a parts car and I cut it to size. I'm holding it with a magnet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hold it right there like that and then I'm going to tack it in place and uh, then I'll come back and show you the tacks. I, I don't have enough hands to do it all. So um, that's the fit. I like to leave about a sixteenth of an inch gap all around it on both sides and the back. And I'm going to try to make the front flush. And this isn't a show car, but hey, if you're going to do it, may as well try to get it right. Okay, I got the first tack there. I've got the right edge pretty much straight. But you can see I've got more of an eighth inch gap there on the back. Um, and the bottom's a little bit larger than a sixteenth, but it, it should be okay. I'm going to try to tack the top in. I want to tack it in four places and then I'm going to stitch weld it. And I'll show you some of that in a minute. Okay, so here we have it tacked in about four places. And I'm going to start filling some of this in. Okay, so here you can see I've tacked it along the top and the bottom edge. Um, I ended up turning the uh, heat down from uh, the middle of the 18 gauge setting to right between the 20 and the 18. I'm probably going to turn it down just a little bit more so that I can fill that gap. I don't want it too hot because it'll be blowing holes. So here you can see where I turned the, uh, the uh, setting down. I'm going to turn down the voltage setting just a little bit more right there to about the 2. And uh, hopefully that won't um, burn through. Okay, now this is the top side of that hump, and you can see, and this is the inner panel, so you're not going to see any of that weld right there, um, but I just wanted to show you the penetration, which looks pretty good. I hope the camera's in focus. Um, I'll probably touch it up a little before I put the top metal piece on, but um, it looks real good with the penetration. So I'm going to go back, and I'm going to clean up and weld this edge right here, fill it in. So I need a little extra light, so I've got my little shop light here, but you can see it now. I actually piled it on a little thick there on the left hand side. That's a vertical weld, it's a little bit of a pain. It's vertical because once again we're on the uh, rotisserie. And I'm using 023 wire and I've got it uh, with the Argon CO2 mix 7525. So that looks pretty decent, I'll grind it down and it should be pretty smooth. Okay, so this is the uh, finished patch, and as you can tell, once it's painted over, you won't be able to tell. I mean, that, that's how smoothly and nicely that weld came out. And I'll show you the tools I use for grinding here. Basic tools, I'll show those to you in a second. Okay, once the weld was complete, I used these two tools. Now this is um, Harbor Freight, and I think it went for 15 bucks, and on sale it was even less than that, probably around 10. And I have this little cutting disc, but I use it for grinding when I do the fine finishing work. And here I have a four and a half inch Ryobi grinder, and uh, just a standard grinding wheel. The handle can go in three positions, left, right, or in the middle. So. Those are the basic tools that I use for grinding and getting that finish that you just saw. Now, here's the inside of the weld, and as you can tell, it's um, pretty good penetration. And uh, definitely structurally sound for a floor pan, especially 
when you're patching small pieces. But that, that should do for any floor pan repair. So I've got the top piece made. I'm gonna grind in here a little bit. Take these little uh, MIG welding wires off. And then I'm gonna fit the top piece and I'll weld that in. But uh, that's it for the video. I hope you enjoyed it.